I've been a geeky guy for a long time, as long as I can remember. My early memories are filled with images of watching Star Trek reruns, Star Wars VHS tapes, and a few other special things taped off the TV. One of those was a space action adventure show which stuck itself in my mind the same way those other movies and TV shows did. That show was Battlestar Galactica, and after catching up with it recently, I'm excited to tell you how well it holds up. So I'll just say up front, it holds up pretty damn well. After going back and watching it all again, it's been a genuine pleasant surprise how much I enjoyed the original Battlestar Galactica TV show. Sure, it could be argued that my own nostalgia makes me biased, and I wouldn't strictly disagree, but in trying to form this retrospective, I think it's a legitimately well-made piece of sci-fi space opera. We begin in a far-off star system where a shaky truce between the twelve colonies of Kobol and the robotic empire of the Cylons is broken when a surprise attack from the Cylons leaves humanity's fleets and colonies in ruins. The flagship of the fleet Battlestar Galactica leads a ragtag group of civilian ships off on a journey to find Earth in hopes of finding salvation. For 1978, the overall production of this show is incredibly impressive. Lavish sets, solid visual effects, costumes, ship designs, and an absolutely fantastic orchestral score driven by a truly wonderful and memorable theme tune composed by Stu Phillips. In a very short space of time, the universe of BSG feels broad, colourful, and alive. Expert world building without mountains of dull exposition. Instead, a cryptic, cool voiceover gently sets the tone for the series. Despite the dire premise of the show, the original Battlestar Galactica is very upbeat and bright in its style. Lots of laser guns and shining chrome robots, dashing pilots and wise mentors. Contemporary reviews of the show called it a Star Wars ripoff, which I never really thought was fair. The success of Star Wars no doubt helped get it made, but the idea of a fun space opera story is nothing unique to Star Wars, and the universes themselves have enough unique elements to be different from one another. Star Wars is the classic hero's journey taking inspiration from the likes of King Arthur fables, whereas BSG is more like Homer's The Odyssey, an ensemble cast of characters on outlandish adventures while on a larger quest. And what a cast it was. They're mostly archetypes, but the charisma of each actor really brings them to life in captivating ways. Lorne Green as Adama simply radiates a warmth and authority, turning him into the fatherly figure of the show. Dirk Benedict and Richard Hatch, who was also great in the reboot, are thoroughly watchable as Starbuck and Apollo, the wise cracking hotshot and the noble warrior. It's a simple dynamic, but Hatch and Benedict have undeniable chemistry which is a joy to watch. Marin Jensen as Athena and Terry Carter as Colonel Ty, along with many others, all do well with what they're given. For the most part, it's the charisma of the actors rather than the writing for their characters which makes them memorable. Although simplistic, Battlestar Galactica certainly had a great casting director to pick up the slack where the writing was more shallow. But once more, my favourite character has to be Gaius Baltar, for completely different reasons than the reboot. John Colicos, who Trek fans will know as famed Klingon warrior Kor, is a brilliant main villain for the show for the exact opposite reasons James Callis was so great in the reboot. Whereas Callis' version was complex, cunning, and shrouded in moral relativism, Colicos is a scenery-chewing, maniacally laughing arch-nemesis of the Galactica. Nuanced writing is all well and good, but the fun of a dastardly evildoer also has its merits, and Colicos is having a ball playing the part. In terms of storylines, the first half of the season is dominated by solid, but largely unextraordinary episodes. The Cylons are up to no good trying to lay some kind of trap for the fleet, but our heroes think or fight their way out of it. Not bad at all, and largely very entertaining with some nice action sequences, but the highlight of Season 1 is undoubtedly the two-parter Living Legend, when Galactica reunites with the lost Battlestar Pegasus. Although I do find it really difficult to take Lloyd Bridges seriously in anything. Like I picked the wrong week to quit sniffing blue. Not his fault. The writing for his character is immediately compelling, as his gung-ho jingoism clashes with Adama's more reasoned concern for the civilian fleet. Not to mention it introduces Sheba, who proved to be the missing piece in forming the central heroic trio of the show. While Boomer, Athena, and others were fine for the most part, they seemed to sort of rotate out of episodes and weren't given a whole lot to do. But the eventual will-they-won't-they -they romance between Apollo and Sheba while Starbuck became the glue to hold the friendships together was the perfect dynamic for the show to settle into, especially after the truly tragic death of Apollo's wife. Although the boxy character as an example of having a cute kid for the sake of having a cute kid, the sudden killing off of his mother really makes you feel for them as a family unit, and Richard Hatch's performance during the scene and its fallout is fantastic. From the Pegasus 2 power onward, the season really picks up in quality. You really get the feeling of the show finding its footing after the shaky ground of disposable but fun pulpy adventures. Here we got some real development for the characters and more interesting stories than the Cylon scheme of the week. The War of the Gods 2 power was also a highlight for me, offering a different kind of conflict, that of morals and manipulation rather than 
within guns and ships, as well as planting the seeds of elements which were no doubt meant to be expanded on later down the line. And that's the most annoying thing about the original Battlestar Galactica. The landmark production also meant huge costs, and after only one season the show was cancelled and brought back later with the awful Battlestar Galactica 1980. The question remains however, which is better, the original or the reboot? In terms of sheer quality, the reboot is absolutely the superior product, but that's mainly due to the fact that it had a miniseries and four full seasons to develop its characters and plots. While the complexity of its characters and themes were revolutionary in the TV landscape, the good old-fashioned adventure fun of the original show was not to be dismissed out of hand as it was by critics at the time. The Star Wars rip-off accusations really plagued the show at the time, but it's been largely shown to be an invalid criticism. Star Wars rip-offs often copy these superficial elements, repackaging the same ideas and iconography for a result that feels shallow and cheap. But Battlestar Galactica wasn't a cheap cash grab, it was sincere to the core. It created its own distinct universe and mythology, and was led by actors giving charismatic and memorable performances for solid characters. It's just a shame the cancellation means we never got to see the full realisation of the original vision. In the end, it comes down to personal taste. Do you want a gritty military drama set in space, or do you want an innocent space adventure? It's up to the viewer. But what I am encouraged by is the variety of Battlestar Galactica's legacy. Universal has been developing a feature film reboot of the property for some time now. I doubt it'll happen soon, if at all, but I'm curious nonetheless. What direction is the story going to go in this time? Will it take more cues from the original or the reboot? Will it be something even more radical and different? The fact that, by strange serendipity, Battlestar Galactica is this unique property which has an immense creative freedom is really exciting. I'd be happy with more of either version we've had thus far, but I'd also be intrigued by something entirely new. There may even yet be Brothers of Man who pen the script for the next seminal version of this sci-fi franchise. Somewhere beyond the heavens. Thanks for watching. If you like these videos, you can see more of them early over on my Patreon, where you'll gain access to a whole host of exclusive perks. Until then, have a good one, live long and prosper.